The name is genius. Tommy genius. There's only one thing I like more than a good smoke, and that's a good babe. That's why I moved to Santa Monica, California. I'd been a flyboy in Korea. After one airstrike too many, war got to me. To be frank, it rendered me impotent. That's why I relocated to the warm environs of Santa Monica. I knew I'd be knee-deep in babes. Fabulous modern girls. I knew they could once again re-enliven my dormant phallic impulse. Check out, for example, Karina, the brunette on the right. This is a girl with her own view of life. Young, modern, arrogant. And her friend Shirley, also modern, handing me the phone, perhaps a case, a case I could crack. No, it was more phone sex. Phone sex was the one thing that kept me intact. I'm wearing your boxers again, she said. And again, I'm dripping wet. I want you here with me. Here with me, Tommy. Well, I want you now. Uh, well, baby, I, uh, I'd had enough. I'd been excited to the point where I couldn't resist any longer. It was time to climb out of this pool. Don my fashionable Bill Blass robe and deal directly with these two babes. Hi, Tommy Genius. I hear you used to be a boy genius, she said. Yes, I said, I used to be a boy genius, but I just outgrew it. Mr. Genius, I need to retain your services this week. There's a very important missing person in my life. Well, there's a lot of things missing from my life until recently. Perhaps I could be of assistance to you, though, if the cash is right. $50,000? Sounds reasonable enough, I said. Perhaps, indeed, you could retain my services. As an early phone sex pioneer, I had a car phone installed. This was unheard of in the Eisenhower 50s. It was an effective tool of stimulating conversation. Oh, I feel you now. Yes, baby, I'm moving in. I want to clutch you to me. I want to drive deep inside you. Oh, keep hammering away at me, Tommy. Hammer away with me like race cars spinning out of control. Yep, that's how my libido was in those days. It was like a race car spinning out of control. Soon enough, I found the boy I had to track for the $50,000 was a race car driver, a typical Santa Monica playboy. Yep, a hopped up jockey of these flying chrome steeds. His friend Al was debonair but stupid. Perhaps I could get some information from him as to Larry's whereabouts. I haven't seen Larry around here in many days, he said. I hear he's supposed to sign on for the big race coming up this week in Laguna. Yes, but Larry was always very last minute about these things. You see, his mind was on other things. What things? I should have known the answer. The answer was simple enough. This was, after all, Santa Monica. The answer could only be one thing distracting a race car driver. Dangerous modern babes. Yep, good old Santa Monica. Land of tunnels. Land of hidden away design shops. This was the corrupt city where Johnny Roselli used to run gambling ships, just four miles off the Santa Monica Pier. I had heard all about it. I was steeped in the history of this seemingly pleasant burg, but I knew much more lay beyond the surface. It's always been my thing to seek out young, modern, hip designers. You see, I like suits. I like them cut just perfectly. I don't want to go to Hong Kong and buy a cheap cotton that hangs limply. When I want a designer, I want the best. That's why I came to Karen Wells. Karen, I said, you seem a little stiff, perhaps frigid. Oh, that wasn't Karen. This is Karen. I gave her the once over twice. Her eyes invited me to dance, to dance a secret dance of passion, muted passion, cool bop tones of the 50s. She gave me an appraising eye. She liked what she saw. I homed in closer to find out just what this bird was all about. It seems to me you're not a man of great fashion. That Hong Kong suit is hanging limply on you. 
don't be so sure, maybe it's something that couldn't be cured by your designs. Let me get a look at your work. She gazed at me with a peculiar Lauren Bacall intensity. Her designs were striking, modern. Oh, so you were a student of the Sorbonne? Yes, but if I knew you better, none of my bones would be sore, she said. I laughed, lightly. Very good, I said, a witty bone well. But I want to know more about you as an artist. Art is what gets me pumping. These are my lesser designs, she said. Lesser? These have been in vogue. The hell with vogue. Well, what about Mademoiselle? Mademoiselle is very well and good for young girls, but now I'm designing for Mirabella. Mirabella? I've never heard of that magazine, I said. Well, you should see my spread in the latest National Geographic. It's quite unique. Ah, yes, the one with the Tilbury and Islanders, I said. I had seen it, page 97 through 102. Then you're familiar with my artistic depth. I'm a modern woman, Tommy. Modern ways you'll never understand. Sometimes I seek the company of women. Hmm. She seeks the company of women. Do you mean? Yes. I'm tired of the male hierarchy, she said. This is, after all, Santa Monica. I'm tired of a world with a paternalistic God. I'm tired of Yahweh. I freed myself from the constraints of your society. All well and good, I said. I left. I molded over further over some drinks. It seemed alcohol could quell these yearnings in my soul better than anything else. Yes, I used to be literary. Literary indeed. Did you publish in the small magazines? Before you became a detective? Yes, me and Ginsburg and Rexroth started together. Yes, I've heard of them. They're quite very good. Your, your prose was elemental though, animal. Yes, I did surge with an animal vitality in those pages. I felt your thrusting phallus in every word, she said. The hammering insistent rhythms, the Whitman-esque encompassment of life, the way you bit into raw experience and chewed its ear off and spat it on the ground proudly. Care for a cigarette, I said? Yes, cigarettes bring us closer to death and hence sexuality. In that case, I might as well light it for you, I thought. My cock can be as hard as that Ronson lighter I just held, if only it would be mine. I'm a desperate man. I've been impotent since Korea. I'm a detective now, though. She told me to go to the Crescendo, the hippest club in Santa Monica. Santa Monica was now the burgeoning seaport town that brought the hipster connoscenti from all over the world. These were the chosen people, the elite few. A rich, deep underground sparkled in the caverns of Santa Monica. It was here that Mort Saul first found his way into spoken word prominence. Mort Saul, as a direct jazz-like adjunct to the beat generation. Mort Saul, riffing brilliantly about society, tearing it down, restructuring it, deconstructing it, making mincemeat out of Eisenhower and the rest. Mort Saul in his little sweater set, ambling off stage after laying waste to the American decadence. Mort, I want to thank you for laying waste to the American decadence. But who's the babe over here? Well, I think you've met her before, haven't you? Indeed I have. She's a fashion designer of great note, I thought. Well, she hasn't done much by you, he said. And he left, leaving us alone for a moment. I love Santa Monica, I said. Yes, you should see what we're planning for the promenade one of these days. Promenade indeed. Perhaps one day you'll promenade with me. Yes, I miss the prom, but I don't mind the nod. I said. Very witty indeed, she said. Yeah, I'll show you more than wit this time. And there he was. She whispered to me. Robbie Robertson had entered the club. Robbie, a personal friend of Scorsese and the rest. Another dangerous nightbreed hipster on the loose. Yeah, I saw him in the last waltz. It was all very well and good. Maybe I will get his autograph after all. I thought it was time to make contact with some of the hipper Santa Monicans. Uh, Mort, excuse me. Is Robbie still shooting heroin, or is he okay and approachable at this point? No, go ahead. Say hi to him. He's a very hip cat. Okay, Mort. You're the last word in hip. I think I will go over and uh, make myself visible. After all, I'm new in Santa Monica. Hello. This is a handshake I learned in Korea. Oh, Korea. That's right, I was raining down airstrikes on the 17th parallel. Ah, 
I like geography. How do you like that guy over there, Mart Saul? I think I'd make him lead vocalist in my band. It's either him or that other Jewish guy, Bob Dylan. Hmm, you have a thing for Jews, don't you, I said. Well, yes, indeed, Jews and booze. Jews, booze, babes, newspapers, everything. I cash in on it all. You see, I'm a man of the world. Okay, I have a Fender Stratocaster. Yeah, I have a Fender Stratocaster, too, but... Well, then you understand. Look at this headline here. You see, what I've been doing is planning a series of rock tragedies so that I can take over. Hmm. That's a distasteful way to get ahead in the business. Look at Mort over there. He doesn't use those kind of tactics. Where was the babe, though? What happened to my modern femme fatale babe? Hey, bring back my paper. Shadows. Santa Monica is a land of shadows. Shadows and closed doors. Come in. I've been waiting for you, she said. Perhaps I will, perhaps I won't, I said. I used in over the threshold between flesh and soul. When will you ever learn, she asked. I'm tired of the male hierarchy. Well, here's a newspaper from the male hierarchy. Do you see how you like that? Yes, I read your words. All you males are incompetent. You're fools. You see, I never deviate from my focus. Focus? You're an artist, but I have focus. My focus is accurate, and I never deviate from it. I see a whole new era coming for women. Oh, you've been reading Simone de Beauvoir. Of course I've been reading Simone de Beauvoir, she said. Well, why don't you read some Jean-Paul Sartre? I've read Sartre, too. I was shocked by this. I thought I was perhaps the only person in San Juan that had read Sartre. This really pissed me off. You know? I tried the literary detective game, I told her. I'm tired of games, she said. Life is nothing but games. I'm working it out in Reiki and therapy. I'm unleashing my orgo and energy. I want to be free in my sexuality. I want to be able to embrace man and woman. That's why I moved to Santa Monica. Yeah, Santa Monica. You're one kooky dame, all right. This is the land of half-naked vegetarians. I don't care what you say, I have to be here. The, uh, the land of acupuncturists and herbalists, too. What do you have against new health modalities? Only that they don't do a damn thing for me. I'm a guy that likes to wear hats, suits. I'm a clean-thinking American. I've been through Korea. I've been on the Yalu River when it was frozen. I don't care about your war stories. They're just men shooting at each other. Don't you realize the sacredness of life? Yes, I realize the sacredness of life. I also realize the sacredness of my sexuality. Do you understand? Perhaps in time she would. She eased closer. She liked my hat. You have very nice ears, she said. Thank you, I said. You really are a man of few words, aren't you? I had to think about Owen for a moment. It seemed I had spent all my words. Like Henry Miller, I had gone deep and her rippled up a vomitous stream of language, a torrent, a lava. It singed and burned all that came in contact with it. That's why I stopped being a literary detective and became a drunken Santa Monica detective. Do you realize what's in this paper, she said? There's a real good deal on shoes down there at the promenade at the Charles Jordan shoe shop. Yep, but they open at 9 a.m. We can go now. We could break in together. We can have all the shoes we want. I'm not into shoes anymore. Just plain phone sex for me. I don't understand. You're a virile male. You're a man in touch with his inner soul, his anima. Why do you just want material objects? Because like they said, in a capitalist society we are all commodities. So I might as well drink to it. All right, in that case, down the hatch. But don't you think you're missing something? No, I don't think so, I thought. I haven't missed anything since I saw my best buddy slain in front of me in Korea.